Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I am decorating our little cottage for Christmas. First, we did an exterior makeover on it. It was red and green, which seems like perfect Christmas colors, but not really my favorite, especially for the look I was going for in this cottage. I wanted more of a cottage vibe. And so we painted it blue. You can get that in a video down in the description box below. And then we moved to the interior. I last showed you this cottage and the plans we had for it in our update, which was in preparation for my sister's wedding. So all of that again down in the description box if you want the full story of the cottage and of the wedding we hosted in our barn. So by the time the wedding came, I hope to have this way more done than it was, but that's typically how things go. They take way more time and effort um, and always more money than I think that they're going to. So on the wedding morning, we actually had a plumber out here. Actually, I'm sorry. It was the day before the wedding. We had a plumber out here fixing. We were going to turn the bathroom all on so that people could go to the bathroom in here. We've never, we've never done that in here and all the pipes were busted. So we had a plumber come in and fix that. So now the toilet is operational, but we still don't have the bathroom fully how we want it. And as you know, if you watched my last video, we want to do guests in here. I wanna make this an Airbnb for friends and family. But I didn't want that to stop me from decorating for Christmas because I really wanted to decorate for Christmas last year but it just wasn't done enough to even do that at all last year. And so I decided that this year, no matter what, I was going to decorate and it is a lot more done this year than last. So to catch you up to speed on the actual makeover, we ended up doing shiplap on the upstairs ceiling to cover up some old ugly boards and give the ceiling a little bit more height with exposed beams. We patched up a lot of the drywall, we painted it. I brought in an antique bed and a rug. I also added American Blossom Linens sheets to this bed. The sweet owner, Janet, watches this channel. She reached out. She has a lovely sheet company and makes the most luxurious, organic, cotton, super nice, super high quality sheets. And she offered, when she saw my cottage update video and she saw that I wanted to make this a cozy, comfortable place for guests, she offered to send me some of her sheets and of course I was so happy to accept. She did offer that anybody who watches my channel can get 20% off with the code BOON20. You can find the sheets and enter the discount at bit.ly slash farmhouse blossom linens. I love that the American Blossom Linen sheets are really well made. They have super thick elastic around the bottom of the fitted sheet, which I never see and they're also made in the USA. In addition to the pillowcases from American Blossom Linens, I also found two embroidery edge pillowcases recently at a thrift shop. I believe they were about $4, so that was a good find. I also brought in a quilt and a knit blanket and some cozy pillows, all to make this bed a little bit more comfortable. We also hung some lights in this room. We just did plug-in sconces because there were two outlets there. I didn't really feel like messing with wiring anything in and tearing anything apart. We are going minimal on this cottage. As little work as possible is kind of what we're doing. So it made more sense. Even though in my main house, I'd probably have something wired in. We just plugged them in. I also found a hanging pendant that plugs in as well because the previous pendant was also plugged in. So a lot of wires running through to plug lamps and light fixtures in, but that's what we're working with. I also found this adorable chair. I forget now, but I think it was around $20 on Facebook Marketplace. Now I still didn't get our railing installed. That's just on the plans, but I haven't done it yet. And since it's not happening before Christmas decorating time, I decided just to embrace the one we have currently, add some garland, make it pretty, and that other one will be coming soon. 
and I'll be able to decorate it in time for next year's Christmas. Downstairs, we also painted the walls and you might notice that the blue is just like the blue on the exterior. Here's the thing, I did not even mean to do that. I did not pick the same color. I just went to Lowe's, grabbed the little paint swatches and picked a color that I liked and until it was up on the wall, I had no clue that I basically chose the exact same color just by a different brand. Um, apparently I love this color of blue. So I don't know, it's not really my favorite that it's the exact same as the outside. So maybe eventually I'll change it. I might just change it to the same tan color that we have upstairs. So we'll see. And I'm, I'm not gonna tell Luke that anytime soon. <laughs> I was trying to go for a little color down here and I always love blue. So that's what I went with and I picked the exact same blue without realizing it. I will leave the names of the paint colors when I look back through my notes that we painted in here. For the mantle, the kids and I made some dried oranges. I hung a dried orange garland. I hung a faux garland that I bought last year. I absolutely love these faux garlands. I actually ordered a few more this year so that they can go up the steps in our main house and then go on the mantle. They just look really real and beautiful and it's nice year after year to not have to go foraging for fresh greenery, although that's beautiful. It just makes it really easy. So that's what we went with. I brought out some grain sex stockings that I made. I have a tutorial for this on the blog if you wanna make these for you. I also added some faux candles. That way we can have nice little twinkly lights in here at night, but not risk fire. And then I have my lovely trees that my friend Kelly, a local potter, made for me. Again, all sources will be linked below. A vintage thrifted mirror, and that's it for the mantle. I brought in a chair that I found for free and I did a little makeover on it. There'll be a link in the description box below for that video. I added some thrifted fabric and some fabric that I embroidered with my embroidery machine and really went with the blue and white theme that I have going on in here. I also brought in an accordion peg rack over on this beadboard-ish looking wall. It's not really beadboard, it's just boards, but it's really pretty and charming and I love it. So I brought that in and added a greenery swag that I made with a couple of bells and some faux greenery and some black ribbon. On the floor, I have a vintage inspired rug from Fame Rugs. I will leave a link for that. I found it online and I really wanted a vintage rug in here, but this one just was really pretty and inexpensive and so perfect for the space. I didn't want one that was very large. Now Fame Rugs also sent me a coupon code which just so happens to be the exact same one that Janet from American Blossom Linen sent me. So you could also use code BOON20 to get 20% off a rug at Fame Rugs. Eventually I want more seating in here but all I have at the moment is the chair so we'll have to, once the tree is gone, a small love seat on that side will be really perfect. For the tree, I got these little wooden, they're actually called uh, gift wrapping toppers, but I thought they were really pretty. I liked the very minimal feel of it. You can tell I'm not going with traditional Christmas colors in this cottage. I am going for that in the main farmhouse. I'm going for all traditional and red. I even bought a snowman mug this year. That's how traditional I'm going. I'm pretty excited about that, but I still wanted the minimal cottage green blue thing in here. And so that's why I went with these little wooden gift topper ornaments. And then I just wrapped the tree with some burlap grain sack looking ribbon. And then I used a cable knit wool tree skirt. So it was a pre-lit tree. I got it really inexpensive the other day. They were having a sale. I don't remember how much it was, but it was pretty darn cheap, which is good for this cottage because it's just, it's not the main house, but I wanted to make it cute and we can enjoy it all this year. I imagine the kids coming in here, turning on the lights at night, getting the heater going, maybe possibly the fire going, but probably not the stockings and just enjoying another little cozy area for Christmas.
actually today I went and got, well, let's just tell the whole story. This morning, my sister had her baby and I'm, I know that by the time this is out, that'll be out all over the place. Uh, she'll be telling her birth story over on her channel, Our Oily House. But she had her baby and I'd already told someone I was gonna pick up this table. So it actually worked out really great because I was already out that way whenever she was having her baby and then I just went and got this table. So it worked out really great. It's an old, I think probably at least a hundred year old oak table with a drawer. I kind of imagined it'd be a little bit shorter and I was gonna put it upstairs, but since it wasn't, I decided to leave it downstairs. We're gonna put a little coffee station on there. That's where the Berkey will go. And then a couple of tall bar stool type chairs to put up to it for guests. So the perfect little addition. And I also wanted to hang up my painting from my friend Sarah Jo here above this table. Now eventually that might go in the farmhouse, but right now this just was a perfect, beautiful place for it. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I will be sharing in my next video, decorating our farmhouse for Christmas. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.